Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, come on in, put your feet up, get yourself comfortable and just enjoy. <laughs> if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. That would be fab. <laughs> so I'm doing my daughter's nails. Now, usually when I do her nails, I do two different designs on each hand, like one in one hand and one in the other, obviously. <laughs> so that we get a couple of videos out of it. Um, so yeah, so this is one of those designs. Um, I'm not sure what order they're going up yet, but anywho, let's get stuck in. So I've just put down base coat. Now I always do that regardless of if it's on top of a extension or if it's on natural nails, just because I feel it, it adheres better. Like, especially around about the cuticle area, it stops it shrinking back and you're getting that wee gap. Um, and here I am just going in with the glittery emerald, I'm sure it is. And I'm using my detailer brush, my Natmog detailer brush, just to get close up to that cuticle area. And it gets a bit neater and you get a bit longer out of your manicure. So I'm just going to do that on three fingers, I'm quite sure. It does look quite sheer here, but after I put the second coat on, it was pretty opaque. So it's it's a really beautiful colour. I love this. It's kind of teal green. Um, and it, I just really, really, really like it. It seems to be my thing at the minute. I just, I can't understand this. <laughs> I've been purple for so long. I love purple still anyway, but this seems to be my thing at the minute. But funnily enough, the two sets that I'm doing on my daughter, she always picks what she wants. Um, so yeah, so she's picked what she's having. Um, I'm going in with under my skin as a nail bed colour for um, a French that I'm going to do on these two fingers. Again, I just do the exact same as I did in the other nails. I'll put down a coat and then I'll go round about that cuticle area and neaten it up best I can. Once I've cured that and I've done two coats of it, I'm now going in and just mapping out my French. So again, you just mark each side, usually about halfway down the nail bed, the natural nail bed, I mean, and then you do a T at the bottom and you pull those in, as you can see. And I'm just trying to round that off a bit. Now I'm using, a, a, I think it's a liner brush actually from Madame Glam that I'm using here, just to neaten up down those wings you can't get a big brush down those wings and her nails are tiny so yeah it's a bit of a it's a bit of a um struggle <laughs> so once i've done that i'm then taking this brush by nail lux um which i'm sure is brush c and i'm just wiping around that that smile line just to neaten it up a bit so i'm just going to do the exact same on this one doing the t then i'll dot on each side where i'm going to go to with the French. Sorry, excuse me. I'm back. I had a wee frog in my throat. <laughs> so I always do this mapping out just to show you in case you're um, not sure and how to get, like, to get your French even, you know, that even French on every nail kind of thing. It's something that is probably one of the hardest things that you can do when it comes to nails. It looks simple, but it's just, it can be a bit testing at times <laughs> let me tell you um so this helps you um try and get it as close to every single nail that you're doing like to get them all nice and the same i think is what i'm trying to say um so yeah so I, again on every nail i do two coats and i cure that in between now i'm taking the vanilla which is the kind of champagne gold and i'm just tapping some of that over the top of the green. So I'm just using my Madame Glam ombre brush just to tap that in. It's a tiny tiny amount as well. Just got a wee drop on my palette. And I'm just going to do the same on my thumb. On my thumb, it's not my thumb, it's it's my daughter's thumb. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Right, so once I've done that, I'm going in with this, which is a mixture of nail sugars, opal flakes and fairy flakes. And I'm just using a, a fan brush and tapping that into the dispersion layer, just a tiny amount. It gives it a wee bit more depth as well, so it does. 
So you get a mixture of that champagne gold and the opal flakes and the fairy flakes all in one. It can only be good. And they're super fine, so when you actually tap them in, it just gives a really, really nice effect, but doesn't add any bulk. There we go. A bit more on that thumb and I think we're good to go. There we go. So now I'm going to matte top coat just to seal all of that in because I am going to do some work with some chromes and if you do it on a tacky dispersion layer it's just going to stick to absolutely everything. So it's good to put a wee matte top coat over just to seal that all in. So now I'm just taking my Madame Glam black gel paint. Now this dries without a tacky layer and it's really, really good for doing what I'm about to do with the chrome. So I'm just going to go around that smile line, just with a wee thin line around that, that smile line. Don't panic if you make any wee mistakes. You can always use a wee brush just to tidy that wee bit up, like so. So I'm just taking my wee Nail Lux brush and just wiping that tiny wee imperfection. And then I'm going to take this gold chrome. Again, this is from Nail Sugar. It's beautiful. And look how easy it is. It just, oh, I can't cope. I, I did cure that black gel paint perfectly. Like it was 100% cured. So um, I haven't under cured it to make that happen. Um, and I was just blown away by how easy it actually stuck to the gel paint. Because you can do this with... Uh, top coat so you would partially cure top coat to get the same effect but the problem with that is for me anyway is I can't see what I'm doing and I can't and you wouldn't be able to see what I was doing if I did it with just clear sorry that's a bit blurry um, so I used the black gel paint so that you could see what I was doing I can see what I'm doing and hoped it worked and it did it worked perfectly I'm so so happy that this worked and super easy as well As you can see, it look, um, there's very, very little of that chrome. Literally, I barely ever add any more chrome onto my wee sponge applicator because whatever was on there was working anyway. So it's the tiniest amount that you need for these chromes to work because they're premium chromes. They're just... Oh, I can't eat. Honestly, I've been wanting chromes for ages. Can you tell? <laughs> love them it's just so versatile and there's so much i can do with them yes the world's a lobster as i like to say right so here i'm doing a half moon so i just make the center part quite thick and then i put a dot at the top and bottom just to map out where i want that moon to begin and end um and then I'm just filling that out nice and neatly. I'm using my my, my sorry my Natalie Muggeridge detailer brush, which is super fine and perfect for detail work. So yes, loved it. Whenever I'm doing this as well, as you can see, I turn the pad over to the clean side and I'm just rubbing it so that picks up any excess. And if there is a wee bit extra on that, it's it's working anyway. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, just a couple of dots on either side, just to add a wee extra something as well. And then on the thumb, I'm going to go around the cuticle area and make a wee cuff. Again, just using my nap mug brush. My daughter's nails are tiny, so I need super fine brushes to do this. Um, and this one works perfect for it. So also when you're using gel paints, don't put them on really thickly because they won't cure properly. You probably get wrinkling, especially with black. Um, black and white are always your ones that you have to be careful with because they're so pigmented that it can affect the curing if you're not careful. Um, so again, just going in with some of that chrome, then turning it over and rubbing in with the cleaner side and that will take off any excess, like so. And then I just went ahead and did some stars on this one as well. But it's super easy and it's pretty and I'm just loving Loving, loving these chromes. And on the French ones, I do a wee star here and then I'll do some dots up the wings just to add a wee something. Again, just the same here, doing some dots. 
and then I'll add and just add some of those wee stars. It's great fun when you're trying to film and trying to get the angle so that you can actually do <laughs> what you wanted to do. It was great fun trying to get that to work. Um, but we got there. <laughs> so there we go, just rubbing that chrome. Look how easy it is. It's just so easy for it to pick up that chrome. I was blown away, just totally blown away by this. It's brilliant. Okay, so now I'm just going to go in and top coat. What I'll do is I'll top coat twice, one after the other. While it's still warm, it's still porous, so that's okay. You can top coat on top of glossy top coat if it's just been cured. Um, and then I'll buff it just to smooth it all out. Gently buff it. Not You don't want a coarse buffer, just a fine buffer and smooth it all out. And then I will top coat again. I don't do that on camera because it's just a whole faff and you'll get bald. <laughs> But anyway, you'll see the finished results in a wee minute. But um, isn't that just so pretty? I love it. And now it's time for Scottish Word of the Week. Hello, welcome back to Scottish Word of the Week. And this week, I'm a wee teddy. Well, I'm a teddy with a wee head. <laughs> You ask for things and it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll get like your bog standard teddy like Julianne Pistol asked me to be a teddy so. <laughs> the funny thing is this week I've been talking about prescription windscreens now that I don't know if you'll know um, Billy Conley but it has this whole thing about prescription windscreens you need to look it up it's hilarious so this is what you would imagine if it was a certain prescription that made things smaller, you would see while you were driving down the motorway. <laughs> Can you imagine seeing somebody with a teeny heat or a massive heat? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to give a quick shout out to Paige Scorpion. What a name, by the way. Fabulous. Um, I love the steampunk look and these are gorgeous. Thank you so much. I really love steampunk. It's just the world's a lobster with it. You can do lots of things, lots and lots of things. The possibilities are endless. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for your lovely comment. And yeah, thank you. <laughs> Let's go on to the Scottish word of the week. So this week we're talking about this here. So I, it's an apple, but at school it was your play piece. So in Scotland, if you say, what do you got for your play piece? It means, what do you have for your snack today at the break? Break time snack, basically. <laughs> but what I learned pretty fast when I was um, talking to my American friends was that peace means something completely different in America. Whereas over here, it either means like a snack or a sandwich. I know, a sandwich, wait, well, a piece and jam. So a piece and jam is like, a piece in jelly, or I. I'm not doing very well for this, am I? <laughs> a piece in jam is like a piece in jello, is it? I don't know. I kind of remember. You'd think I'd know by now. But anyway, yeah, so play piece means snack time on your break. <laughs> that was about your long one. I went round about the houses there. Round about the houses. Anyway, let me know what you would like me to be in the comment section below for next time. And I'll see you later. Bye! <laughs> well, it's not every day you see a teddy with a tiny head talking about play piece and prescription windscreens. <laughs> so this is the final set. I really hope that you liked them and it's helped you in some way. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you like this video, give it a wee thumbs up. Leave me a wee comment down below so I can say hi. And stay creative till next time. Sending you lots of love. Bye!